cooler Sunday morning. I trust we've had our winter now. We can get on with the rest of the year. But uh, it's always nice to have a bit of a change, and we've had that this week. This morning, as I bring the word to you, I need to first of all make a bit of a comment about it because it's. Uh, I'm going to take this off. I'm allowed to do that according to the rules. Um, normally, my my preference is to take a passage of scripture and uh, take time to explain that and teach it uh, in, a, in a teaching format. And uh, not that we won't do that to some extent this morning, but uh, what I would, re re I'm really this morning wanting to approach this from a topical point of view. I want to, my, the title of my message is A Life Without Regret. And what I want to do is look at a number of verses that I've drawn from the book of Proverbs, but the, the part of the wisdom literature in our Bible, and, uh, and there are a number of principles there that, that kind of give us some lessons for life that we can, uh, and we can apply on a, on a, as, as we move through, through our days. And, and I thought I would share some of those with you this morning and uh, some, some verses and, uh, and some thoughts along those lines. The title of the message is A Life Without Regret. And to begin with, I'm going to ask you to do something unusual. I want you to imagine that you have the opportunity to attend your own funeral. And witness the entire service. So you slip in the back door and you take your seat probably at the back. And what do you notice? You notice that the altar is covered with flowers. There's some soft music playing in the background, and the chapel is full of people who have come to bid you farewell. As part of the program for this service, four people have been asked to make a few remarks about you. The first speaker is a member of your family. The second is one of your close friends. So far, you're safe, you think. The third is your next door neighbor. And the fourth is someone from church. They're all going to say a few things about you, but there's a catch that will make this funeral different from some. Everything these speakers say about you will be the truth. No fibbing, no exaggerations, the absolute truth. Now think for a minute. What would you like each speaker to, say, to be able to say about you? What kind of person do you want them to say that you were? What kind of spouse? What kind of parent? What kind of friend? What kind of neighbor? What would you want them to say about your character? What achievements would you like them to mention? As you look around at the people who are there, what difference would you like to have made in their lives? What phrases would you like to hear? Perhaps you might like to hear something like this. He was conscientious in all that he did. Or, she always had a smile. Maybe this one. You could depend on him for anything. He never let me down. Or, I've never met a more honest person. One more. She was generous and caring. Author Stephen Covey has suggested that thinking through these questions Deciding what you would want people to say at your funeral can help you determine your focus in life. Thinking through these questions will also help you to make plans for the future, and that's why I'm speaking this message this morning. 
Plans for the future so that you don't find yourself looking back on your life someday and regretting those things you did and those things you didn't do. As I see it in life, there are two mistakes that we need to avoid. What is to spend our whole life focused on the future to the extent that we miss out on the significance of today? I guess those are the people who are so earthly or so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good. The other option is to spend your life living, only, the other extreme is only to live your life only for today with total disregard for the future. Two mistakes, being caught in this, missing out on the consecutive today or being too focused on today. The Bible does work one against one. There is, however, a happy medium, a balance between, that can be achieved in our lives. And here it is. We need to live today like it matters for all eternity. Why? Because it does. Each day of our lives has eternal significance. What you and I do today will make a difference in how we've, the value of our life is perceived when our time on earth is through. And what's more, what we do today will continue to influence what happens in the future. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs 14, verse 8, the wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways. Those who approach life carefully and thoughtfully will give thought to what they're doing and why they're doing it. This morning, I want to look with you at how some ways in which we can manage our lives in ways that will help us to reach our goals and accomplish things that last far beyond our own lifetime. Perhaps you're here this morning and say, well, I pretty much wasted my yesterdays. I haven't done much so far. Maybe you most, wasted most or even all of your yesterdays. But you know something? Today is a new day, and today is yours. Today you can take charge of today. And in the process, you can make your future what you want it to be and what God wants it to be. Today I want to share with you some steps that we can need to take to live a life without regret. The first thing I want to suggest to you is that we need to decide what kind of person we want to be and to do something today to make it true. So what kind of a person do you want to be? If someone were to speak at your funeral, what would you want them to be able to say truthfully about you? I asked this question a number of years back to a, a care group that I was leading, and I received some interesting answers. Actually, almost everybody in the room gave a, a different and an interesting answer, but two stuck with me, two, two responses. One person said, I want people to say she wasn't out to make friends. She only cared about doing what was right. She's very focused on what she was doing. Another person said, I want to be remembered as someone who was sensitive to the need of other, needs of others. Now it will help you to know that the first person worked in a place where she frequently had to make unpopular decisions. She was in a, a management type of role and she had to make some tough calls. And uh, as a result, she uh, wasn't the most popular person in the place. The second person was a woman who worked uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in social services. In fact, she was a care, worked in a care home. And she was 
very sensitive people and very concerned, very um, wrapped up in and uh, sympathetic to those that were in need. Now, both of these women were committed Christians, but each one had a different idea about what was most important to her in her character development and focused accordingly. One answer, by the way, isn't better than the other, but each one gives a clear indication of what was important to that person. And as Stevens Covey suggests, we need to think about what people, we want people to be able to say in our funeral. We want them to be able to say what, what we hope they will say, to talk about the values and the things that are important to us. As we read the writings of the Apostle Paul, it's obvious that he placed a great deal of importance on consistency and faithfulness. Near the end of his ministry, he wrote, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Read that in 2 Timothy 4, 7 if you want the reference. Early in his ministry, he had said, I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given to me. We find that in Acts 20, verse 24. If you were asked to, to ask the Apostle Paul the question, what do you want to be true about you? He would likely say something like, I was faithful to the very end. How did he make sure that that happened? He knew what kind of person he wanted to be, and every day he did something to make it true. He lived out his belief and his dream for his life. That's why he said, and we're by this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. I think if there's a, it's on the, here as 2 Corinthians, you can correct the two on, in front of Corinthians to one. He said, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Needless to say, Paul is speaking metaphorically here. But the point he is making is that in order to be found faithful at the end of his race, he had to be faithful today. He purposed to live every day like it had eternal significance. I also want to suggest to you that if we're going to live a life without regret, we need to focus on what we want to give rather than what we want to get. Now, in my years in the public school system and even in ministry, strangely enough, I've attended a number of goal-setting seminars where the teacher or leader uh, encouraged us to make a wish of things that we would like to have. Interesting. Typical, typically, uh, participants were encouraged to say things like, uh, to state things in the present like they already had them. So people would say things like, uh, I earn $100,000 a year. Now, they weren't earning $100,000 a year at that time. That was what they wanted to get to. Or, I own a new Mercedes. I suppose that's an ambition. I live in a 5,000 square foot house. Those are the kinds of things that people were told to dream about. But the main problem with this kind of goal setting, aside from the fact that it is vain and foolish, is that the entire focus is, what, is on what you get. And there's a, a huge difference between having things and living a life of significance. Some people, 
spend their entire lives working at a job they despise. Why? Because it offers security. It enables them to have things. Friends, take my word for it. Things aren't worth it. Things don't make our lives significant. The significance we have or can have in this life is determined by what we do, what we give, not what we get. The Bible tells us in the Proverbs 11, verse 4, Wealth is worthless in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. What's, what's Solomon saying in this verse? He's saying, he's reminding us that who we are is far more important than what we have. It's your character and not your acquisitions that give your life significance. So I want to suggest to you that you should think about what you want to accomplish, what you want to do with your life, and that you should choose to be a person of godly character. The principle here is simple. To live a life of significance, we need to focus on what we can give rather than, what, than on what we can get. Success, rewards, money, promotions may or may not happen. And in the large scheme of things, they really don't matter. But what we need to choose to serve others. And if we do that, we will have an impact and we will leave a legacy. I believe with all my heart that if you are committed to doing God's will in your life, God will give you a dream of what you can accomplish, and he will also give you the ability to do it if your focus is on what you can contribute rather than what you, could get, than what you can get. So, do you want to live a life of significance? This is just something significant today. Do you want to be generous? Give today. Do you want to be known as a kind person? Be kind today. Whatever you want to be true about you, do something today to start making that a reality. In fact, I would like to give you a, a little homework assignment. There, this, the teacher comes out of me every week, doesn't it? Today, after you go home, think of three most important character qualities that you would like to develop over the course of your life. And it doesn't matter whether you're an old fogey like me or whether you're one of those young guys down here, you know. It doesn't matter. Your age is not a relevant matter here at all. When you go home, think of three most, most important qualities you'd like to develop. And for the next week, do at least one thing each day that will move you in the direction of making that character quality a reality in your life. So you take those three qualities, and each day you do something in each area that will, will fulfill that commitment to yourself. So if you want to be a considerate person, then for the next seven days, go out of your way to be considerate at least once each day to somebody. If you'll do this with each quality, that I, the three that you've mentioned, at the end of the week, you will have taken 21 steps toward becoming the kind of person you want to be. It's that simple. But it works. Proverbs 11.23 says, The desire of the righteous ends only in good, but the hope of the wicked only in wrath. People who live lives in sickness don't get there by accident. They get there by design and determination. If you're committed 
to doing God's will. And he will give you a dream of what you can accomplish life. And you, he will also help you to fulfill it. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 15, a simple man believes anything, but a prudent one, a thoughtful man gives thought, a wise man gives thought to his steps. And that's true, by the way, for women as well. Another way you can create a significant life is to look for eternal significance in all that you do. I can't say this strongly enough. You probably heard this illustration. Three workmen were asked what they were doing. One said, I'm laying bricks. Another said, and I'm making 37.50 an hour. The third said, I'm building a cathedral for the glory of God. All three were doing the same work. Yet all three viewed it from a different perspective. The key to significance, to living a life, satisfying, a satisfying life without regret, is recognizing the eternal value of the little things we do. One Christmas we spent time, not this one, thankfully, we spent some time in northern BC visiting with our son. I say thankfully this year because the temperatures up there were the minus 30 to minus 40, which is not fun time with temperatures. I know that from personal experience. But anyway, that, in that year that we were visiting, my son and I had a conversation. It was a memorable conversation from my perspective. What was memorable about it was that he remembered and spoke about a single fishing trip that he and I took together, accompanied by our Springer Spaniel Bert. I don't know why we had to bring Bert into the story, but he was there. Now, at the time that we did this, it seemed to me to be just one thing that a father and son do in an afternoon. But as Chris told, retold what happened in amazing detail, I cannot tell you, he remembered things I didn't even, wasn't even conscious of. When we were finished the conversation, I recognized for the first time that that event was for him a very important moment in our personal relationship. And reflecting on that conversation, I wished, and I do wish, that there had been more of those moments in his growing up years. Every day matters. The details of our lives may seem mundane, but you know something? They are filled with eternal significance. We may think we're killing time, but we could be strengthening the bond of a relationship. It may seem like small talk to us, but we could be saying something that could change someone's life forever. We may think we're laying bricks, but we could be building a cathedral to the glory of God. Friends, we need to look for meaning in the little things we say and do. They are important. We see this principle in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ again and again. He would be having a meal with a friend and turn it into a life-changing experience. He would be walking along the road with his disciples and see a small tree and teach his disciples a lesson on faith. Do you want to live a life without, without regret? Remember this. 
There are no throwaway days. Every day matters. Every moment matters. Look for the eternal significance in your work. Look for the eternal significance in your words. Look for the eternal significance in each and every relationship. Look for the eternal significance in the action, in your actions, the things that you do. And maybe I say even your reactions. You know something? Every year, there is a sand sculpting contest near the ocean in Newport Beach, California. Artists create incredible uh, works of art, castles, faces, dragons, not so crazy about that, cars, and so on. All fashioned out of sand. It takes incredible talent to do one of these quote, creations. And thousands of visitors come from all over, well, all over the world to, see, to witness these master and admire these masterpieces. But if you go to that same beach just a few days after the competition, you'll see that those magnificent works of arts are gone, washed away by the tide. The beach looks like it did just before the contest and before the creations. Those incredible works of art all have all been washed away by the tide. Your life and my life doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be washed away and forgotten. You and I can live lives of significance as we allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit. You and I can become the persons God wants us to be. And you and I can accomplish what we want to accomplish and what God wants us to accomplish. I'm here to tell you that you're never too old. I have to believe that. And it's never too late. The key to live a life today is to live a life today like it matters for eternity. You know why? Because it does. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you for this wonderful church family that you've given me. I thank you for each and, each and every person here this morning and those who are tuned in online. Lord, I believe that this year 2022 just started can be a fantastic year, a year of incredible accomplishment. A, a, a year that we will look back on with satisfaction and with no sense of regret at all. As Lord, as we walk with you and we allow you to direct us in the choices that we make and as we choose to follow through faithfully, as we choose to give more than we receive, as we choose to overlook those things that just need to be overlooked and not hold a grudge. Help us, Lord, to make this year and our lives the best that they have ever been. For those, Lord, who may have doubts, who may feel not able, encourage them. Give them the faith to believe that if they will take, each, for each small step they take, that you will 
Give them the return that they need and the encouragement to press on. Lord, may this year be all that we desire it to be, but more importantly, may it be all that you want it to be for us. We thank you for hearing us, and we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Oh, he is a good God. He has good things for us this year as we walk with him, as we seek to take the steps he puts in front of us. We do it with courage. We've got a beautiful day out there. What a wonderful day to go out and just declare the goodness of God to the community that looks around us. Lord, we pray that you may now dismiss us with your blessing. Guide us this week to live lives that will have eternal significance. Lives that will make a difference, not just for us, but for those we encounter. Lord, make us a blessing. We ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Go with God. Amen. Thanks for watching along. It's time to give your tithes and offerings. We encourage everybody to donate electronically on our website rpcchurch.ca slash give or SMS by texting the word give to 844-535-5176 to give with a credit card. We also accept e-transfers by sending them to contribute at rpcchurch.ca. Don't forget to include your envelope number and designation like general, building, missions, youth, or other in the comments box before sending your donation. You can also drop off cash and checks or use your credit and debit card in person during office hours from 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. Or you can also mail a check to our Westminster Highway office. Thanks for your support.